lighting with this uh, heavy overcast sky, but uh, I'm sure if anybody can do it, the Andover Club can do it. Well, John Boston, Peter Carr, Trevor Banks, Marcel Gehan, Gerd Rees, Hans Otto Pingel, Hank Schneider, and Marvin Cox. That's the field. This is race 17. They're away. And Marcel Gerhardt going well. It's Gerd Rees who gets first. Gerd Rees for Marcel Gerhardt. Trevor Banks in third place, and Peter Carr right there with him. But, uh, Banks Third win of the afternoon. That's Gerd Rees. Going superbly. Marshal Gerhardt in second place. Trevor Banks in third. Peter Carr in fourth. In fourth place as they go past us. Number 19, Marvin Cox. Third on the far side. That's Gerd Rees. Marcel Gerhardt in second spot. But Marcel still in a consistent second spot. And Trevor Banks going one in third. Peter Carr in trouble. Carr in trouble. And Marvin Cox moves up into third place. Marvin Cox in third place. Good race. Goes on his way. Marcel Gerhardt still there in second place. Trevor Banks in third. In fourth place, Marvin Cox. In fifth place, number 24, Hank Schneider. And behind him, number 23, John Boston. So, up top of the top there, the Gerd Rees there, going for the Gerd Rees comes down there, looking at the Gerd Rees. In all right, 17. Marcel Gerhardt in second place. Joe Banks in third. Marvin Cox in fourth. In fifth place, Hank Schneider. In first place, number eight, Gerd Rees. In second place, number three, Marcel Gerhardt. In third place, number 12, Trevor Banks. In fourth place, number 19, Marvin Cox. In fifth place, number 24, Hank Schneider. In sixth place, number 23, John Boston. In seventh place, number 28, Hans Otto Pingel. And the winner's time, 1 minute 33.58. 1 minute 33.58, and across to Peter in the paddock. Yes, thanks very much indeed. Well, a uh, little bit more rain coming down here. The side of me is Vashlav, Werner Vashlav. <laughs> I thought you'd, your voice had gone up a few octaves. Having uh, a reasonable afternoon, yeah? Yeah, we have a beautiful afternoon. Typical English weather. Yeah, you could say that again. It's really surprising, I think, to see you competing still. Yeah, uh, I'm still racing, and I want to say thank you to Mr. Barclay. He is only one person in England who, believe me, I still do it. Well, I think you proved to a lot of people you can still do it. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very happy here, and I hope I have booking for next year. <laughs> that would be. You're taking it quite seriously, Vashlav. Yes, yes. Um, I hope I win something one day. Maybe next year. Maybe this year. You never know. For the moment, Vashlav, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and uh, it's a pleasure to watch Vashlav in, uh, in action once again. A lot of us used to enjoy watching him uh, riding here on the speedway. And in recent years, of course, he has been the team manager for the Czech teams at so many of the major track racing events and uh, has passed on his experience and his knowledge to uh, some of the young Czech riders. And, uh, it's been very interesting to see him in action, and I'm sure he's responsible for this crop of good young Czech riders that we see at the moment. Race 18 then, sponsored by Ivor Ponsing Associates from Andover Down Farm, Andover Down, and they are away. Joe Screen goes in this one, so does Simon Wigg. Put the man out in front, number 14, Yuli Utzinger. Yuli Utzinger making a tremendous start, and uh, we're looking for Joe Screen, and Joe Screen goes through. It looks as though it's Joe Screen, who's Ryan uh, Sunny Seal on victory in this one. Looks over his shoulder, and Simon Wigg tucked in behind. Red flag. We have uh, a red flag, so as that fallen rider can be attended to on the far side. We run off race 18.
obviously everybody very, very anxious. making another good start, but it's Simon Wick now, out in front. Simon Wick down lead, look at that corner, he's right there. 10 meters there, Simon Wick down, from uh, Joe Strain. In third place still, that flying Swiss, Uli Utzinger. Tucked in behind him at number 31, which is a wrong fortune, of course. Simon Wick going superbly here this afternoon. Joe Screen in second place. Hutzinger in third. In fourth place is Rob Fortune. Behind him was number seven, Frank Williams. Simon Wick going to go into the last lap. Holding a few metres advantage over number four, Joe Screen. And then Uli Utzinger. Ahead of Rob Fortune. Next three down for number 25, Simon Wick. Joe Green in second place. Yuli Utzinger in third place. Fourth place, Rob Fortune. Then Clayton Williams. Then Carl Stone here. place, number 25, Simon Wick. In second place, number 4, Joe Screen. In third place, number 14, Yuli Utzinger. In fourth place, number 31, Rob Fortune. In fifth place, number 7, Clint Williams. In sixth place, number 5, Carl Stonehewer. In seventh place, number 21, Shane Parker. And in eighth place, number 34, coming in uh, in place of Philly Bush, of course, Paul Smith. The winner's time on 1 minute 34.10. 1 minute 34.10. And we now move down to the third leg of the sidecar competition as we get to race 19. Well, thanks, Tony. As you say, race 19 sponsored by Haynes Garage. They're on the A30. Lotscombe Corner near Salisbury, so uh, local people I'm sure will recognise that. And of course, goes without saying, if you support any of the local sponsors, then uh, it makes it a little bit easier for Ian and Dickie to go back to them next year. Race 19 consists of Craig Cheatham in Grid 1, John Halsey, Grid 2, Ivor Matthews, Grid 3, John Hiscock, Grid 4, Steve Jerson, Grid 5, and Russell Ng in Grid 6. So, what a lineup we've got for race 19. Right on the far side, Russell Ng with two wins already this afternoon. Ivor Matthews in the middle on Grid 3, a win and a second place. John Halsey, a second and a third. John Hillstock has had a third this afternoon. Craig Cheatham's had a second. So, a tremendous lineup for race 19, and very unofficially, if I look at the points table, by my reckoning, we've got Russelling and Ken Lane together on a maximum 12 points. Richard Pickett, Ivan Matthews on 11 points apiece. John Halsey on 9. Three outfits on 8 points. Gary Jackson, Alan Blewett and Craig Cheatham. So, a lot going on this third ride. Russelling will be hoping, of course, to make his position in the final a little bit more concrete. He's got two wins already. Ivan Matthews, who uh, came out against Ken Lane last time out. He had a win first time out, you remember. Second to Ken Lane in his second ride, but looking in good form. Well, one of the riders taking a long time to get to that start line. I can see that we've got rustling already on the start line on the far side.
Oh, it looks as if John Hitchcock has indeed pulled out of the race, not able to get his machinery started. He's now pushed his way back to the pit entrance, so we're missing John Hitchcock. The rest of the riders now come to the line. They're already ready to go. A lot of engine revs going up. The start is not happy with things, though. I just wonder whether there is signals from John Hitchcock's crew that they can... Uh, Get another outfit, or uh, John of course does have two outfits, but no, the rest of the field is allowed to go. So, four outfits only going in this one as Russell Lee again makes a very good start from the outside grid. Michael Matthews goes after him, John Horsey is up in the third as they go into that first bend. Russell Lee with two wins already this afternoon, powers his Yamaha around that top bend. Gets to the front once again. A brilliant start from him. He really has made some great gains this afternoon. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dell is up in the second place. They'll be pushing all the way because they'll want to get into this final of the Ace of Aces. They were third last year at the Ace of Aces. Rustling, determined to get on the leaderboard this year. Second in the British Masters. And looks to be in very good form. He throws all the dirt at Ivan Matthews. John Halsey, seeing that Ivan Matthews has slowed coming out of that top bend, closes rapidly. Starts to get a little bit closer coming around that top bend. Great teams are losing those front three as he slows coming off that top bend. So it looks like there's problems for Craig Cheatham as he pulls into the centre of the circuit. We're left with three outfits only, but this one an important result for Russelling and Paul Urich. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dow still scoring well, and John Halsey, you can see, desperately trying to remove his goggles. He's caught everything from both Russelling and Ivan Matthews. And that's when it gets a little bit hard. It becomes slightly guesswork coming off those top bends. But as we see the checkered flag being made ready, it's going to be the third one for Russelling and Paul Urich. They really are having a great afternoon this afternoon. That's their third checkered flag. A great ride from them, Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowles. Get another second to add to their points total. John Halsey and Tony Miles, the only other finisher finishing in third spot. Got the result in already. A win for outfit number two, that's Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, outfit number three, Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowles. Third place, number 19, John Halsey and Tony Miles. The winning time, 132.11. 132.11, two, three, and 19. Jackson and Kevin Williams. They've had two third places so far this afternoon. So they're well up in the point scoring. They sit on eight points overall this afternoon so far. Rob Wilson with a third and a sixth place, a disappointing second ride. He, of course, riding Roger Meese's outfit. He uh, will be looking to get a good result in this one. And then we look at the results of Big K, Neville Penfold and Len Foreman. All of them had fifth places first time out. But then time out, Big K got a third, Neville Penfold got a second, and Lennon Ray Foreman got a fourth. So, riders uh, getting used to these conditions, perhaps. We look to see what happens in race 20. This one's sponsored by JJ Sublines. They're down in Amesbury, where I think most of you came through on the way in. We look to see what happens. Of course, there is a reserve in for this one. That's uh, Gary, Gary Wright. He's riding 21. He goes in place of Gary Moon. I can't quite see who it is that's uh, holding up the start of race 20, but the reds go up, away we go. Looking for that outside grid again, that looks like the Ray Foreman has made a very good start from that outside grid, so perhaps that outside grid, grid 6, is proving to be the better as the day has gone on. Mick Cave has got himself up in the second place, as it all starts to close for that second place as they come round past me. It is indeed Lennon Ray Foreman and Lee from... Mick Cave in second, Gary Jackson is up in the third and Gary Wright holding fourth at the moment. Neville Penfold, disappointingly back in fifth place, we look to see if he can work his way through. But as we look to the front, Leonard Ray Foreman, who've had fifth and fourth places so far this afternoon, find themselves at the very front. It's getting close though, as I say, they're at the front because now Gary Jackson has moved through brilliantly. 
He's come from third place last time as they came round by me. He's got past Mick Cave in second and Lennon Ray Foreman to get to the front. Mick Cave goes for the gaps as well to try and get to front of Lennon Ray Foreman who's turning sideways on that top leg. Everybody else goes fast and Gary Wright has now moved up into third place. Neville Penfold up into fourth. But as we go into the last lap, Gary Jackson, who I'd said had two third places so far, he goes to the front. He finished third, of course, in our British Masters Championships, so he's had a very good season, always been on the, the leaderboard in the big events, and indeed has had some great rides. There's a good scrap going on for third place, if you look back and see Neville Penfold giving Gary Wright a hard time as he tries to come through and get that third place. As we look to the checkered flag, it is a win for Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Mick Cave comes through for second and Gary Wright just hangs on to that third spot. For Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams, that puts them into a very strong position going into that fourth leg. In second place, number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Proving all the time in third place, number 21, that's our reserve, Gary and Steve Wright. Fourth place, number six, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Fifth place, number 16, Lennon Ray Foreman. No other finishes, the winning time, 133.87. 133.87, 14, 5, 21, 6 and 16. Now well, we move on to race 21, the uh, last of the third leg of the sidecars before we go back to those four qualifying legs. Uh, with this sort of lineup of competition in both sidecar and solo, I don't think the promoters had any choice but to run the four legs. Away we go. at the moment, so we stay with the race we've got in prospect as we look to see them come round off the top end. We're looking, of course, for our Masters champions, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, and it's those that lead as they come past me. Alan and John Blewett up into second place as those two get away from the rest of the field. But looking at the results so far for Ken Lane, he's had a win and a win. He knows that... Uh, it's getting tight at the very top, rustling, unbeaten so far as well. So Ken Lane and Mark Edwards in the position they want to be, right at the very front. Alan and John Blewett, unofficially, I have them on eight points as well. They're in at second place. Well, indeed, it was Richard Pigan that was left on the start line. He'd been having a great day up until then. So you can see that he's now turning the power on at the back of the field to see if he can close up on a few positions, but Ken Lane and Mark Edwards are well away from the Mallon and John Blewett, still there in second. Can Richard Bigger catch any other of the riders? Number eight is Jerry Adams in the third. And uh, Richard Bigger are second in the fourth place. Well, he's asking an awful lot of Richard Bigger. He's always a lap down when he got going. Chicken play goes for Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. That's their third win of the afternoon. How and John Blewett pick up second place? Well, Richard Bigger got close, didn't he? You can see that Jerry Adams finishes in third, Richard Jenner in fourth, and Richard Bigger a fifth place. Well, that's a disaster for his point scoring. Friends from uh, the continent of Europe have been coming to see their first ace of aces, and... Uh, well, we hope they've enjoyed the sport they've seen and the organisation they've seen, but uh, we're just as disappointed about the weather. I know it's English weather, it always happens, but uh, we do have some very nice sunny days at this time of year. And uh, I'm afraid this just wasn't one of them. Still never mind, it's Ace of Aces time with a lot of super racing to watch, a lot of fun to be had before and after the event, and don't forget that presentation of awards at the end of the day. I'm pleased to see that the uh, podium has stayed in place out there, not blown away, as several people were predicting earlier on in the afternoon. Here we go then, race 22. Blaine Williams getting well, but dropping back as uh, number 14's out in front. So it's Yuli Utzinger and Steve Schofield on a laid down motor. Now that's an interesting move, isn't it? Schofield, uh, and they go, it's really going, and Scoey coming through, Steve Schofield going ahead of the uh, flying Swiss, putting him back to second place, in uh, third place, it looks like Vaslo Werner, uh, 
Trevor is the most consistent man on the British Royal Country over many, many years, and uh, he's still going really well. Mark Lauren looks like he's in trouble there. I don't know whether he just eased the throttle and took the, the tore the visor off. Uh, that lost him certainly a few lengths. He goes really close to oil up to it. Meanwhile, then, as the checker flag goes out, it's going to be yet another victory for Brenner Bank. Mark Loram in second place. Gerd Reed in third. In fourth place, John Boston. In fifth place, Tony Forward. And we have a sixth place runner. Yes, we do at the top of the hill. Number 30, Andre Pollard. Number two, Mark Laura. In third place, number eight, Gerd Reese. In fourth place, number 23, John Boston. In fifth place, number 26, Tony Forward. In sixth place, number 21, Shane Parker. In seventh place, number 30, Andre Pollan. And in eighth place, number five, Carl Stone here. Winning time, one minute, 36.69. One minute, 36.69. Well, it's a long, hard afternoon of racing here today. It always is hard in racing terms at the Ace of Aces, but the conditions have certainly made it that bit harder. But what uh, good sporting riding we've seen. In race 24, we have Robert Farr, Will James, Samuel Malenko, Peter Carr, Peter Lloyd, and Otto Tinkle, Graham Jones, and Marcel Gerhardt. Number 11, Robert Barr. 
In second place, number nine, Peter Carr. In third place, number 33, Will James. In fourth place, number three, Marcel Gerhardt. In fifth place, number 28, Hans Otto Pingel. In sixth place, number 27, Peter Lloyd. No other finishes, Samuel Malenko had only done two laps, and the official time for the winner, 1 minute 33.24. 1 minute 33.24. Well, the solos coming out then for race 25. They're doing good business over there. gets underway. We see them fighting for Griffiths to come off the top, but it's Simon Wig. Simon Wig then uh, with Jeremy Doncaster. And Donkey led initially, but uh, had a little bit of a moment on the bend, and Wiggy gets the win. Jeremy Doncaster keeps looking down at the machine, or he's obviously not happy about something. But it's Simon Wig on Joe Screen and Joe getting uh, a little bit tangled up. Jeremy Doncaster in third. In fourth place, Vaslav Milik. And in fifth place behind him, Marvin Cox. Looking down on the motor and interesting uh, to see. Well, Joe Screen this time then decided to uh, and uh, and uh, Simon Wig I think has uh, has a big problem. We saw sparks flying then. Uh, I'm quite sure what's happened there, but we you know, so the uh, field being decimated is Joe Screen, Hensum into the last lap. In uh, second place now, number 19, Marvin Cox. In third place, number 31, Ron Ford. And Joey uh, Dockham has dropped right back, just ahead of us. Uh, Marvin Cox, Cox crosses the line in second place. In third place, Rob Fortune. In fourth place, Jeremy Doncaster. Well, what a strange race. Uh, Results then of race 25. In first place, number four, Joe Screen. In second place, number 19, Marvin Cox. In third place, number 31, Rob Fortune. In fourth place, number 16, Jeremy Doncaster. In fifth place, number 17, Vaslav Milik. No other finishers. Winner's time, 1 minute 35.05. 1 minute 35.05. That completes the solo qualifying races and uh, we now look gracious me with blue sky in the distance coming our way we look towards the final qualifying stages for the side cars now they're on 16 points at the moment on 14 points gary jackson and kevin williams equal on 13 points we've got john horsley richard piggott and alan and john bluey very, very close at the top of the sidecar competition. Remember, only six go through to that final. We watch to see what happens in this fourth leg. Now we look to that far side and uh, a chance to see Ken Lane in action in this first one. But interestingly enough, Gary Jackson and Alan Blewett are the ones that you've got to keep your eye on because Gary Jackson on the 14 points at the moment, Alan and John Blewett on the 13 points. They'll be the ones that will be anxious to score. And yet again, Alan and John Blewett have made a tremendous start. Well, they've got through the front going into that first bend. Ken Lane goes after them as they come round that top corner. Only three outfits that have emerged from that start gate. 
We'll pick them up for you as we come by. Of course, it is the three outfits that I was talking about, the Gary Jackson and Alan Lewis are the ones that really need the points. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, I feel sure, will be top four in the but Alan and John Blewett know they've got to do well. They're doing well at the moment to stay in front of Ken Lane and Mark Edwards as they come round off that top end. Well, we've seen them had good starts this afternoon, but the rest of the field has called them. But now they look to have got things sorted because Ken Lane is desperately trying to get past them. But Alan and John Blewett continually closing the gaps. Ken Lane pushing hard on the inside. This will keep Alan and John Blewett going because they know they need to score well in this one to make sure of a place in the final. Ken Lane is forced to go wide on that top bend. As we go into the last lap, he drives hard on the inside. A brilliant top corner from Ken Lane. Showing that he can go wide and turn hard in the middle of the event, but Alan and John Blewett have stayed in front. A great scrap between these two. Well, I said that maybe Ken Lay would be happy with any position. He wants to win every single race. Alan and John Blewett, a brilliant ride from them as they go into that top corner for the last time. They know that this is going to do their campaign the world of good on this last ride. They take the checkered flag. Ken Lay and Mark Edwards, the first time they've been beaten this afternoon, finishing second. And Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams finish in third. Race 26, and how fortunes change as the day goes on. A win for outfit number 10, Alan and John Blewett. In second place, number seven, that's Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. The first time we've seen them beaten this afternoon. And in third place, outfit number 14, that's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. 1.36 the time, 1.30.16. So, Alan and John Blewett, have they done enough to get into the final? It's going to entirely depend on what happens in the next two heats. 10, 7 and 14, that's the result of race 26. Finally sponsored by Mick Potter Turf. From Bromley and Kent, Mick Potter and they is one of us with Grass Track has sponsored many riders over the years. And of course the Mark the uh, organisation say thank you to all the sponsors for supporting the races this afternoon. We move on to race 27, where we've seen the drama of race 26. Only three riders out there, but they could well have changed who's going into that big final at the end of the day. Race 27, sponsored by Lewis & Lewis Southern Limited. They're from Ferndown Industrial Estate in Wimborne. And as you can see, there's hires, hires of equipment, lawnmowers, rollers, drills, etc. So if you ever can use them, please do so. Let's look to race 27. No Paul Pinfold, no Gary Moon. We look to see whether John Hiscock goes this time. He missed his ride last time. Mick Cave, outfit number five, on 11 points, knows he needs to do well in this last ride. He'll have seen Alan and John Blewett go well in their last ride. He knows he's now got to do well to have any chance of getting to that final. Oh, Russelling and Paul Urich go in this one. They go from the inside gate. We've seen them have some very good gates this afternoon, but primarily from the outside from where I'm looking. That's towards the crowd on the far side. Great groups five and six. But, uh, Russelling and Paul Urich go from the inside. They've had two wins so far this afternoon. Three wins, I should say. I can read my own writing now. They're on 18 points. Heading to the point scoring. Again, it looks as if there's delays on that start line. But as the sun starts to shine, we uh, hope that this is going to stay like this for our finals. As we see them get underway, Russell Lynch from the inside has made a brilliant start. Uh, Four or five bike lengths clear of the rest of the field. Looks like Gary Wright has got up in the second place. John Hiscock in third at the moment. Mick Cave has come through to third base, but it is Gary Wright in second as Mick Cave ducks underneath all the rubbish that's coming off those front two outfits. Oh, this week. I can't There we are, that's pretty smooth for you. As we go round that top bend, the rustling and Paul Urich looking absolutely tremendous this afternoon. They go past me, leading from Gary and Steve Wright. Mick Cave and Mick Stace in third place at the moment. Jerry Adams is up in the fourth. He's been scoring all afternoon. Really all eyes 
I think will be on the crew of Russelling and Paul Urich, Yamaha Power that they've stayed with over the last two years and it has proved successful for them. Second in the British Masters this year and they would love to pick up some of the big titles at the end of the year. The Ace is here this afternoon and the burn-up title down at Tunbridge next week. So we wait to see what happens with that next week. But this afternoon we come to trade on what's happening in fourth leg. Because Russelling and Paul Urich come round to collect their fourth checkered flag of the afternoon. That's the maximum. They're sure of a place in the final. Coming to the line is Gary and Steve Ryder. Great fight from Big K, but he has to be content with third. Jerry Adams finishes in fourth, and John Hiscock in fifth. A win for Elmfit number two, Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, number 21, that's our reserve, Gary and Steve Wright. Third place, outfit number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Fourth place, outfit number eight, Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock. Fifth place, 18, John Hiscock and Dave French. The winning time, 130.56. 130.56 the time, 2, 21, 5, 8 and 18. If he can affect the point scoring as well as we go over to our last race before the interval, following the interval, the big finals to come. That's the two consolation finals and of course the big ace of aces finals. Who is going to take that title for 1992? We look to race 28 to see for the last time in the qualifying rides, Ivor Matthews and Mike Dowles, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. No Martin Baker, of course, Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey. Oh, they're right up there amongst the points. They come into this last ride on 13 points, so they know that they would like to do well in this last ride to be sure of a final place. Leonard Ray Foreman had a brilliant ride in their third ride. They've certainly been scoring consistently this afternoon. And John Halsey. Missing John Halsey, of course, he is equal on points. I might reckon, I would say, if I'm made to make uh, a little bit of an error. Well, I hope I can be excused for that because uh, it's been a bit frantic in here this afternoon. Six of us trying to agree on the, the lap scoring. I would say that in the conditions, our lap scorers have done an absolutely brilliant job as always. Well, we look across to that far side, the interval coming up in a few moments following this race. Plenty of chance to use the facilities laid on if you haven't brought anything with you. Richard Piggott going from Grid 4, Ivor Matthews from Grid 1. Ivor Matthews, I felt, would have been reassured by the fact that Russell Ng made a brilliant start from that inside gate. I really don't think there is any advantage on that start line. As we watch this in a break, Neville Pinfold has gone well from Grid 2. He gets to the front as Ivor Matthews goes after him. He goes into that first bend and Paul Randall put his arm in the air. I can't see whether that has been a problem for them. But it looks as if Paul Randall put his hand in the air. Then the outfit came back on song again. Uh, Ivan Matthews has managed to get through on the inside of them, but it is Neville Penfold in second place. John Halsey in third place at the moment, and I'm looking to see where Richard Piggott is. I think that that's Richard Piggott back in fifth place at the moment. So it really hasn't been uh, Richard Piggott's day. As we watch to see where he can find his way through, we thought he looked very, very quick earlier on today. But Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowers, going well at the moment as they go past us leading from Neville Penfold and Paul Randall, John Halsey up into third place and Richard Piggott with all the work to do has got himself up one place well, he's got riders in front of him that have scored equally as well as he has this is where of course it gets a little bit difficult because the point scoring is so important around these fifth and sixth places who goes in the A final who goes in the consolation final well, John Halsey is right in there amongst the score and he's up in third place. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowles have certainly booked themselves a place in that A final. They of course were third last year, so they will be hoping to improve on that third place in 1991. They had a good win two weeks ago at the Sierra meeting. That's another checkered bag for them. They'll be pleased with that. They will then follow Paul Randall must sit and wait to see what happens with adding up all the points. John Halsey and Passenger Tony Miles also must do the same thing. They sit and wait for the points because those two crews are around those difficult point situations. Race 28 
and the last race before this uh, fairly short interval, a win for outfit number three. Ivor Matthews and Mike Dowles in second place. Number six, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Third place, number 19, John Horsley and Tony Miles. Fourth place, number 12, Richard Piggott and uh, passenger Martin Bailey. Fifth place, number 20, that of course is our reserve Richard Jenner and sixth place number 16. The winning time 130.27, 130.27, 36, 19, 12, 20 and 16, 130.27. So indeed, we move to the interval. I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for the interval. It's very, very cold out there. Debut here. Peter Carr, Rob Fortune, Clayton Williams, Hans Otto Fingal, Sam Romalenko, and John Boston. this end of the season we do right at the beginning of course that uh, cold motors uh, a bit reluctant to fire up and run sweetly but uh, I'm sure that'll be sorted Adam Zoleg Kukuskin uh, Russian competitor who took part in the European Grass Track Championship who won the consolation final last year and uh, Trevor Banks was in second place and uh, Trevor this year out there where he belongs in the main final He's raced so many times over the course so then as you can see machinery being uh, just maybe absolutely certain it's running nice and sweetly before they go across to the start line has concluded his day's interviewing and our thanks to him for uh, keeping us in touch with the views from the competitors and of course so many of the, uh, the supporters who've come along to uh, support their riders up there and uh, what an elite band they turned out to be. So then, any moment now, we'll see the competitors called in behind the starting gate and uh, the organisers of course keen to get these uh, last four races through getting a little darker in the distance there. as though the last of the competitors has arrived on the start line. It could well be that uh, the day delay was because the competitors uh, with the highest points choose their uh, first choice, in fact, uh, to choose their position on the start line. And, uh, See Graham Sharp up there, uh, Clark of the course, anxiously watching the start line. The hard-working team, the Andover Paddy Sports Club is, they really do work tremendously hard each year to put on this splendid ace of aces. Well, we just saw a couple of people rushing across to the start line. Maybe they, maybe one of the competitors has a problem. We have a flag down. We're ready to go, I think. Race 29, then. It's away. We have no signs. There's anything other than a very clean start. And number one, 
Then Steve Schofield, Clayton Williams in behind him in second place. Marvin Cox in there as well. I'm telling lies, Marvin Cox is in the A1 The challenge is coming from behind him. We're looking for Peter Carr to come through. Steve Schofield then from Clayton Williams, from Peter Carr. And uh, that looks like John Boston alongside Yuli Utzinger. Yuli Utzinger has gone to Williams. Schofield and Peter Carr is closing up on Clayton Williams. Steve Schofield on the gun machine once again. Two laps to go. Still Clayton Williams in second. Still Peter Carr in third. But Carr going for that second spot. Didn't make it that time. And he's got to keep some pressure on Clayton Williams. And Clayton Williams is over that battle for the second spot. And Steve Schofield has one more lap to go. Clayton Williams still in second place. Peter Carr still in third. In fourth place, Yuri Singer. And behind him, it's number 31. He's going to take the consolation final. He couldn't take the main final this year, but he's going to take that consolation final. Success for Steve Schofield. Clayton Williams in second place. Peter Carr in third. In fourth place, Juliet Singer. Behind him, number 31, Rob Fortune. And behind number 31, Rob Fortune, is number 32, Vaslav Werner. Race 29, the 1992 Ace of Aces Solo Constellation Final. In first place, number one, Steve Schofield. In second place, number seven, Clayton Williams. In third place, number nine, Peter Carr. In fourth place, number 14, Yuli Utzinger. In fifth place, number 31, Rob Fortune. In sixth place, number 32, Vaslav Werner. In 7th place, number 28, Hans Otto Pingel. In 8th place, number 23, John Boston. And in 9th place, number 16, Jeremy Doncaster. No 10th finisher. Winner's time, 1 minute 35.32. 1 minute 35.32. Over the page we go to race 30, and I'll pass you across to Jim for the Sidecar Constellation 1992 Ace of Aces final. Well, thanks, Tony. As we go into the sidecar consolation final, I think I can only add to your comments that when you look at these two consolation finals, they really would, for any club in the UK, be proud A finals. What a lineup for race 30, Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey, the 1991 Masters champion, goes against number six, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. Their first year in the Masters competition and a brilliant finish from them. Number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Number eight, Jerry Adams and Sean Biddock. Number 21, Gary and Steve Wright. And number 18, John Hiscock and Dave French. A tremendous lineup. I wonder where you would put your money on this one. So we look to see the uh, sidecars being made ready for this consolation final, of course, following that, as we keep saying. Two more big Ace of Aces finals to come, then we go into the presentation, and I do hope that you will stay and show your congratulations. I think there's been a lot of grit and determination from all the riders this afternoon, and I would firstly say the same to all of you that have braved the weather. I hope these finals are going to make it all worthwhile. Up to that far side, the same thing happening once again. It's the top point scorers that get the first choice of gate. It's not bottle up if uh, a rider can make uh, the right decision to get the right gate. 
opportunity. He's given the opportunity to by scoring well through the heats. It makes it worth racing during the heats. And indeed, I think we can also see that this afternoon. He's seen there with plenty of old days on the line. He's taken the middle of great. Mick Cave and Mick Stace also there in the middle. Shifting in. Perhaps or Route 5. John Hiscoff, I can see, has gone to the far outside. We've seen a lot of good gates from that outside gate this afternoon.
those outside gates. Ken Lane, I'm sure, having seen John Hiscock make such a brilliant start from that grid six, he's decided to take the same position. Russell Ingham, Paul Urich, just on the inside of them. Ivan Matthews and Mike Dowell in on grid four. John Halsey that they're all waiting for to come into the line. Uh, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams I haven't seen, haven't even got started yet. So they get the outfit started. Those are going to be the outfits that line up on the inside of the gate, taking grids one, two and three. Alan and John Lewitt already there. Now John Halsey moves through. And Gary Jackson, the last to come into line. So the rest of the outfit's been quite patiently sitting, waiting, and indeed I thought that Ken Lane had gone on the outside. I'm sure all the crowd over on the far side have uh, seen before I did that uh, Ken Lane wasn't actually on the far outside. He was actually in group five. John Halsey is now in group six. We've got them lined up for the start of the 1992 Ace of 85 and Ken Lane has missed the start. Paul Tuchman gets start for Russelling, but he's after for Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. It is Russelling and Paul Urich that go into that first bend leading this field. Ira Matthews and Mike Dow trying to fight their way through in the second place. They find a gap in front of John Halsey who's got into that second place. Oh, Gary Jackson has moved through. Alan John Blewett looked to come through on the inside of Gary Jackson, but Russelling and Paul Urich look to have got away from the rest of the field as they power down the back straight. They wind their Yamaha on and go into that top end with some considerable margin on Ivan Matthews and Mike Dow in second. So disaster for the fans of Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. He sits on the start line and just watches the final. I can see on the far side they're trying to get the outfit started, but we'll have to find out what happened to that bike. We'll see if we can get somebody across there, but let's stay with Russelling and Paul Urich. They've always wanted to win this Ace of Aces final. They come round that top end looking very, very strong at the moment as they power past us. Into the last lap, I'm sure the Russelling and Paul Urich fans are going to be jumping up and down as they go into this last lap. Ira Matthews and Mike Dowers have got problems. Ira Matthews puts his hands in the air as he puts his arm up in the air. It means that John Halsey and Tony Miles move through in the second place. Alan and John Lewis hold third. But problems for Ivor Matthews. I thought that he was going to go from third last year to second. But the winner, of course, as he comes across the line is Russelling and Paul Urich. In second place, John Halsey and Tony Moore is a great result for them. And Alan and John Lewis, the father and son team, pick up a brilliant result, fighting their way through this afternoon to get into third place. So disaster strikes for our British Masters champions. But of course, a victory that Russelling and I, Paul Urich, would have loved to have won so many years. They've been such a strong competitor. They, of course, went second last year. They've now done it for 1992. A brilliant result. I'm sure as you'll see them come round, there will be lots of congratulations for Russelling and Paul Urich, John Halsley and Tony Miles. By far their best result of the year. They'll be pleased with that one. And Alan and John Blewett, they've had a disastrous year. And indeed, that will please them to get third place at the Ace of Aces. Well, as they come past me, we'll have a chance to talk to them a little bit later on. They fight with a loose man with a great result for John Halsey and uh, Tony Miles. Alan and John Blewett again fighting with this loose. They've uh, pulled out of the very loose dirt on the far side. I don't think any of them realised quite how deep it had got over here. The official result then of the 1992 Ace of Aces sidecar. Final, a win for outfit number two, that is, of course, Russelling and Paul Urich. Their winning time, and quite fittingly, the fastest time of the day, 129.72. In second place, number 19, that's John Halsey and Tony Miles. Third place, outfit number 10, Alan and John Blewett. And fourth place finisher there, outfit number three, Ira Matthews and Mike Dowles. The winning time, as I say, 129.72, very fittingly the fastest of the day. 
I can only remain to say that we hope you will support them when they come to the winners' rostrums in what is going to be now only a very few moments because we have just one more race left. I quickly hand over to Tony for the Ace of Aces solo final. A tremendous race that promises to be. Thank you, Jim. And what great sidecar racing we've seen this afternoon and these incredible conditions and some uh, very, very uh, close, really. Perhaps for those of our friends from uh, Germany and Holland and France who haven't seen so much of these big chairs, perhaps they can now appreciate why we think they're such good value and such great entertainment. Meanwhile, we'll turn our face to race 32 of the solo final. Mark Lauren goes, last year's master champion. Good Reese, last year's long track champion. Trevor Banks, who's been winning for so many years and has won here before. Joe Screen, the British master champion this year. Marcel Gerhardt, the world long track champion. Robert Barth, twice European grass track champion. Simon Wig, what can we say about him? He's won it all over the years. World long track, British masters. Will James goes with it, Graham Jones and Marvin Cox. This is going to be a tremendous solo final. As before, the positions are balloted for on the top ballot, or in fact they are chosen by the top point scorer. In fact, it might be quicker if they were balloted, might it? But there we are. They take up their positions then, uh, which they've chosen, and they're chosen by right. Those with the highest number of points choose their position on the start line, and off we go. And the winner... <laughs> Sportac Trophy and £800 as a reward for his endeavour here this afternoon and richly deserved, I'm sure you'll agree. So then, a tremendous final in prospect and uh, an interesting and a suitably international one, isn't it, with uh, Gerd Rees, Marcia Gerhardt, Robert Barr and uh, going with the British entries in race 32. as Jim reminded us all, the presentation which follows the, this final and uh, we'll have our chance to talk to the top three in each class and uh, well, that's provided the wind uh, doesn't drive us off the podiums that is and uh, of course Rachel Garley will be down to uh, make those presentations and we also as you can see in your programme have the presentation of the Brian Griffin Racing Most Exciting Rider of the Day Trophy plus £100 now, I wonder who's going to win that as though we might get a little more sunshine just to uh, add into the last race of the afternoon. And what a last race of the afternoon that's going to be. Race 32 in your program alongside it. You've got the Ace of Aces roll of honour. No, false start, I think. Uh, are we going to see anybody excluded from the final? Touching tapes is uh, an exclusion offence here, as it is in most international track racing events. They've all turned round well Trevor Banks has been excluded for touching the tapes word from the start line judge well, that's disaster because Trevor's had a tremendous afternoon here.
Okay, the sign is uh, displayed to all the competitors when they go to the start line. They must not touch the tapes. No rolling starts. And that's what it's all about. And uh, unfortunately, Trevor managed to find himself in that position this time. So that's very, very sad. Well, everybody right on edge up there. This is one event that everyone wants to win, the unofficial grass track championship of the world. They're away this time. They come down the hill with the sun behind them. And out in front, it's good race. He's done it and made a tremendous start. Mark Lorem goes after him. Joe Screen in third. And I can't spot uh, Simon Wigg at the moment. Joe Screen in third place, and Screen goes for Lorem. Screen tries to come round the outside, but it's Gerd Reese with the advantage still. Mark Lorem still in there in second place. Joe Screen in third, Will James in fourth, Marvin Cox behind him, and trouble for Robert Barr, trouble for Barr out here at the point of Back a little way, but it's Gerd Reese then with the advantage. Two more laps to go. Mark Lorem keeping the pressure on in second place. Gerd Reese upholding the honour of Germany and going for the first uh, German win of the Ace of Aces. Will James now closing up on Joe Screen. Will James in fourth. Joe Screen in third. Mark Lorem in second. Gerd Reese in third. Gerd Reese in third. He's done that back straight. He'll come round and no laps to go. Can he hang on in there? Can Mark Lorem close up on him? It's Gerd Reese who leads. Mark Lorem in second place. And they're really flying along. In third place is Joe Screen. Fourth place, Will James. In fifth place, Marvin Cox. Start the fourth place. It's Joe Green going for the first uh, German victory in the eighth of eight. One more place to go around the top then he goes. Joe Green comes down the hill. He hangs on in there. There go the Maroons. It's Joe Green who wins the ace of aces for 1992. Mark Lorem in second place. In third place is Joe Screen, who looks in back as though he's got problems. Then Will James. Then Marvin Cox. And then Marcel Gerhardt. Well, what a well-deserved victory here this afternoon. We've seen Gerd Rees win his first three qualifying outings, go out and uh, not, in fact, win his, uh, his fourth ride, but he's come out and won when it matters. Gerd Rees, the winner of the 1992 solo Ace of Aces. gentlemen, the result of the solo Ace of Aces final for 1992 as follows. In first place, Gerd Reese, number eight on your program, in a time of one minute, 32.89. In second place, number two, Mark Lorem. In third place, number four, Joe Screen. In fourth place, number 33, Will James. In fifth place, Number 19, Marvin Cox. In sixth place, number three, Marcel Gerhardt. In seventh place, number 18, Graham Jones. So there we have it. It's now across to the center for the garlands and the trophies and the interviews and... Uh Well, I'll get right to it.
the last of the photographs get taken away from John and Tony. It means that we've only got one more place to fill for the Cycle competition. That, of course, is the number one position. And this year, I'm sure they get got a very big loud cheer for third in 1988. They were second last year. We said to them, surely you ought to be up at number one. This year, they received it. It is, of course, Rustling and Paul
have a gentleman here anxious for a lift to Manchester. Or along the M6. Well, as they get the riders uh, together for the last of the photograph, <laughs> that'll be, I think we're going to call in the solar winners as well. Of you making any predictions for next week. Of course, that is the bonfire ground up next Sunday. Down there at Cumbridge, dead easy to get to. Just pick yourself up on the M25 and pick up the signs for Paddock Wood. Then you'll find it. A tremendous lineup for that meeting next week. Well, what can you say about these? Uh, I've got to say, nine competitors, Tony. I think we can say what a tremendous performance they've all put on. They really have been absolutely great. And if I could just quickly ask if uh, Richard Bruce White is here. Richard, could you spare us just a very brief couple of minutes if you can make your way through the crowd? Richard Bruce White.